Hello and welcome to today's episode. I am Sakshi Mandwal and the subject expert is Ashish Garg. Today, we will be exploring some more topics in Photoshop Part 4. I hope you enjoyed the learning of Photoshop Part 3. Photoshop is the software which is most favorite in the line of media and entertainment industry. It is the foundation any software related to media and entertainment. So far, we have learned about layers. Layers are an important option while you work on any assignment. With the help of layers, you can make your job easier. After that, we discussed about the brushes for painting. There are many brushes with which you can paint. For digital painting and matte painting, you can use brush option. Masking is also a type of selection in Photoshop. We learned vector masking, layer masking in our last episode. We learned the gradient tool for filling multicolor in one click. Gradient gives you the option to use multicolor in your canvas with the different filling options. We also learned about the layer option for giving essential effects to the text, layer or image. It can add shadow, glow on the edges, edge strokes, etc. And now, in this episode, we will be learning about these new tools. Clone tool, heal tool, eraser tool, pen tool, blur and smudge. Clone tool. Clone is exact replica of all or a specific part. The function of this tool is to create the replica of some or all parts of the image. For cloning, the pixels are copied from the same or different image. The clone stamp tool is probably the most tedious tool in Photoshop, but it is an important tool. When restoring old photos, it is indispensable. It is used for copying or cloning one part of a picture to the other. The clone tool is useful for the following purposes. Removing defects in photographs, dust, scratches, tears, stains, beginning, etc. Removing unwanted items from a picture, phone wires, trash, artistic effects. The clone tool is selected from the toolbar with the symbol shown below. To use the clone tool, source and destination points are selected. The source is defined by holding Alt and clicking with the left mouse button. Once the source has been defined, the image or the area is copied by clicking with the mouse. You can use any brush tip with the clone stamp tool, which gives you precise control over the size of the clone area. You can also use opacity and flow settings to control how paint will be applied to the cloned area. Three methods for cloning. There are at least three methods used for cloning. It can be cloned directly on the background layer. It can make a duplicate layer and cloning is possible on that layer. Cloning is also possible on a separate empty layer. The first method is most often used by beginners because it is the most obvious. It is also the most dangerous because any changes are permanent and can't be undone once saved. Therefore, this method should rarely be used. The second method is better because no changes are made to the background layer. However, it is more difficult to undo mistakes. The image also occupies more storage space as there would be now two copies of the image. Therefore, this isn't the best method either. In practice, the third method offers many advantages. If a mistake is made, it can be erased from the image using the erase tool. It takes up less space on the disk and it is easy to toggle the changes by clicking the icon. There can be multiple clone layers.
clone tool options. On the options bar, there would be six set of options, brush, mode, opacity, flow, aligned, sample all layers. Of these, mode, aligned and sample all layers and sometimes brush are useful for photography. The opacity and flow should be set to 100%. Brush size and hardness. The brush option allows the user to define the brush size and the hardness or amount of feathering of the brush. However, rather than select a brush, it is much easier just to use the shortcut keys. Left bracket decreases the size of the brush. Right bracket increases the size of the brush. Shift left bracket decrease the amount of feathering. Shift right bracket increases the amount of feathering. The left and right brackets decrease and increase the size of the brush with each key press. There are 5 degrees of hardness and each click changes it by 20% which gives you 100%, 80%, 60%, 40%, 20% and 0% as shown in the figure below. There is a trade-off when cloning between hardness and softness of the clone. A harder brush gives a purer clone but can be very harsh and abrupt. On the other side, a soft brush is less harsh but by definition is less sharp. Ideally, you would want to use the hardest brush you can without making the clone obvious. For most cases, unless you are cloning something very uniform like sky, the two hardest brushes will produce too sharp a transition in the image, usually 40% or 60% would be ideal. If for some reasons none of these default brushes are suitable, a user defined brush can be defined under the brush option with any hardness from 1 to 100 percent. Let us understand the role of clone tool in a practical example. We are taking an image and in this you can see some cracks on the road. If we need to fill all those cracks then we will have to use the clone tool for that. So, let us understand through a video that how clone tool works in this situation. After taking the clone tool, we start filling the crack by taking a sample of closest pixels to crack. You can adjust brush according to the requirement. A softer brush will create a blurred clone patch. It would not be a good visual. So, the clone brush should be hard. The hardness can be around 40% and adjusted to the requirement. You will have to work in zoom mode to ensure that clone patches come properly on the image and there is no seam or blurred image. You can spend some time to give it more realistic look to copy the pixels. So after all the cloning process, we are likely to get this result. Heel brush tool. After cloning brush tool, let us talk about the healing brush tool. The healing brush is an intelligent paint brush that is similar to the clone stamp tool only in terms that you sample from one image area by alt click on a source area and then paint to cover up blemishes, wrinkles, scratches or image damage. The healing brush samples looks at the texture, color and luminosity of the source area separately. Then when you paint it, merges the texture from the sample area into the color and luminosity of the destination area. It is also useful to create a seamless merge. The healing brush can only work on layers with actual pixel information, that is the background layer or layers with pixel data. You can find healing brush tool in a toolbar. To understand the working of healing brush tool, here is a video which will make you understand the benefits of healing brush tool. We will be working on an image which is a portrait with wrinkles. So as we discussed about healing tool, now let us understand its working. Let us take an image. In this image you can see wrinkles on an old man's face. The idea is to remove the wrinkles which also can be done by clone tool. But using the healing brush tool will make a difference. 
By using healing brush tool, the patch will be copied and pasted. But as soon as you paste the patch, you will find that the luminosity will be adjusted according to the current pixels and the copied patch will merge with the current pixels. This option of healing brush tool makes it different from the clone tool. When we talk about the healing tool, it is one of the most efficient tool the Photoshop has provided. When you see healing tool, it has a shortcut, say J. When you press shift with J, you can toggle between the different sub tool of this category. With the sub tool, healing brush tool, you can correct your dust, scratches, blemishes or other imperfection in your photograph effortlessly. This help you, help you in eradicating a large portion of unwanted thing in a photograph. This to this second tool come the patch tool, as the name suggests patch tool. This works on a micro level. When you zoom to an extent as required in a Photoshop, you can correct a portion or a selected area on the pixel level. This is done can be done on the patch tool with the patch tool. But remember. To get the best result out, you need to have a small area to be selected and retouched. The third is the third tool comes the red eye tool. Often, when you and I have been cl clicking the photographs in the past, we have come across the red eyes and whitening of the teeth. So this can be very scary at the time. But to correct this tool in the photograph, this in the photograph, Photoshop has provided a tool called red eye tool in a healing tool category. So with the help of this tool, you can correct the red eyes or whitening of a teeth. The last tool called Content Aware Move Tool. When you say Content Aware Move Tool, it's very clear with the name that Content Aware Move Tool, you can, collect, you can select an area and drag that particular area to the area where you need that patch. So leaving this area a hole, a big hole, this area is filled by the nearby material or nearby pixel accordingly automatically, automatically in the Photoshop and that makes your picture perfect. This is the work of Heal Tool. Eraser Tool The Eraser Tool erases parts of the image. The shortcut for Erase Tool is E. Its icon looks like the pink erasers you used in elementary school and it works nearly the same way. You can pick eraser tool from the tools panel and select a mode from the options bar, brush, pencil or block mode. To understand, let's watch a video which will make you understand the working of the eraser tool. Erasing on a layer. Removes pixels from just that layer while erasing on the background layer replaces those pixels with your background color. In the next video, we will see how Eraser Tool works. We are taking an image. You can find the Eraser Tool in Toolbar. Select the Toolbar. We can adjust the Eraser Tool brush size. As soon as we start the working, you can see while we use the Eraser Tool, the working area is becoming white. It means it's erasing pixels in the image. The background has become white. Now we are changing the background color from white to red and you will see that the color is different this time while using the eraser tool. If we remove the background layer, then the background will become transparent. You can also reduce or increase the hardness and softness of the brush and it would give you the softer or harder feel while using the erase tool. You can also change the opacity of the eraser tool to reduce the effect according to your requirement. When you talk about eraser tool, eraser tool has a shortcut E. And when you press shift with E, you can toggle between different sub tool of eraser tool. In the property bar, you can change the size of the brush, opacity, flow, intensity, as well as the flow when you're using pressure, pressure, or you're using a mouse pen. When you say using eraser tool, you can erase 
the unwanted portion in a photograph or an image. The second to it, uh, to it comes the background erasing tool. The background erasing tool, what it does, it erases the background as much as you might be aware that a photograph or an image has a three parts that's called foreground, middle ground and background. When you want to erase the background from the foreground, what you can do? You can select this tool, a very effective tool and you can erase the background. But always remember to check the box in a property bar saying protect foreground color. Doing so, you will be saving your foreground and you'll be able to have, you'll will be able to erase the background as needed. The third comes a magic eraser. When you say magic eraser, as the name gives, magic things, is really magic done by Photoshop and giving a tool as a magic eraser tool. When you select this tool, magic eraser tool, in a property bar, there's a checkbox called contagious. When you do contagious, when you check this contagious box, what does the Photoshop does? It selects a color which having a same RGB value all over the place. So when you check the box and erase with this magic eraser, you will be able to erase only the portion which has the same RGB value. The moment you check out the box, what happens? You will see that the moment you just select one color and click over it, you will be having all the RGB value of the same color erased from the complete photograph. That is, can be done with the help of magic eraser tool. Pen tool. As we learned in our previous chapters that Photoshop is a graphic software, but there is a tool in Photoshop which works on the vector graphics. It is called pen tool. This tool is one of the few tools available in Photoshop that works with vector graphics as opposed to raster graphics. Vector graphics use mathematical statements and points in order to define their shape and other characteristics and therefore are very scalable. In other words, vector graphics can be scaled to any size without ever losing quality or without pixelate. With the pen tool, we can create lines and curves that can be put together to create custom shapes. If we combine the pen tool with some of the other vector shapes, we can create some intricate scalable objects. In the next video, we are going to show you the pen tool which will enable you to draw and create some custom shapes. You can access the pen tool and toolbar. The shortcut key for selecting the pen tool is P. As soon as you will click the pen tool option and toolbar or press P on your keyboard, it will get selected. After selecting the tool, you are ready to work with this. Take a new canvas. In toolbar, you will find pen tool and start clicking on working area. As soon as you click on the canvas, you will find that it's creating a point and on second click, it's creating a line. And this consists of two points. 
To complete the shape, we will click on the first point. As soon as you will click, the shape is done. The best part of the pen tool is that we can edit these points or shape by using the path selection tool, which is specifically available for pen tool. Path selection will enable selection of the complete shape and you can move the shape with the help of this tool. There is another tool, direct selection tool, through which you can edit all the points which you created at the time of shape creation and you can move every point to change the shape. Sometimes we found that we need some more points to edit it in more accurate way so that there is an option in the pen tool section named add anchor point. As you click on the shape, wherever you want to put the anchor point, you can change the shape by using anchor point and tangent. Now the shape needs to be filled with color so that we can convert this shape into selection by using control plus enter key on the keyboard. As soon as you press control plus enter, you would see that it has changed into a selection which will enable you to fill it with color. The best part of this pen tool is that your path or shape which you created will remain in the path palette. It means you can reuse that shape and can edit that also. Blur and Smudge Blur tool The blur tool allows you to make certain areas of the image as if the image was filmed with the camera out of focus. There are a few reasons to use the blur tool, such as you want to camouflage on imperfection of a photo. Some people use the blur to change the depth of field which will make a portion of the image to be blurred and causes the subject that is in focus to appear to be sharper. All of the tools we will be talking about are located on a two-column toolbox on the left-hand side, right below the eraser tool. Right-click this image and you will notice the blur tool, sharpen tool and the smudge tool. Let us now understand through a video how the blur tool works. To understand the blur tool, let's take an image. You can see an image in which some flowers are there. We would use blur tool to make the background blur except the flowers. As you use the blur tool, it starts blurring the image. You can increase the blur strength to make it more effective on your image. We will blur the slide flowers also so that the middle flower comes into focus. When you talk about blur tool in a Photoshop, the shortcut is R. The moment you press R and shift together, you can toggle between the sub tool of this category. This category has blur tool, sharpen tool, and smudge tool. What the blur does tool does? For example, you have a photograph and you want you or your image to be very clear and rest background fade off or get into blur. What you can do? You can select your post, you can select your portion or your photograph and inverse select and you can use this tool to blur all the entire background leaving your photograph into focus. The second tool comes called sharpen tool. As much of help, what this can do, this can show up sharpen an image to an extent. You can do and see the difference. The final one in this category called smudge tool. As the name defines, a smudge tool has a finger kind of icon in this category. When you select this tool and start smudging or start keeping this icon on the two portion of a photograph, photograph, you can see that two, two portion smudges together with each other. So this you can try and find out what's the difference between all these, all these tools are. Smudge tool. Think of the smudge tool as if you painted a line on the wall with the brush and the paint was still wet. And then you used a different brush and used a different color. 
and paint it over the first color, like finger painting. You would indirectly be blurring and changing the color. Smudge tool blends multiple pixels together. In the process, it will usually create a new color or a different shade of a color. To understand the smudge tool, let's take a canvas and take a brush to paint some area with red color. Now, in toolbar, we will find the smudge tool. You can see the smudge tool is stretching the pixels by dragging the mouse on red color. This is a good tool to make paintings. Artists work with this tool to give some artistic feel. Summary. In this episode, we learned about the uses of clone tool, which is helpful in restoring the old images. Later on, we discussed about the eraser tool, which is helpful to extract the unwanted area in your images. After that, we discussed about the pen tool, which is another selection tool and it gives you the path can be edited. The healing brush tool gives the same output as clone tool, but makes a difference by preserving the luminosity. The blur tool can give a blur effect and the sharpen tool can give a wet effect and extend the pixels as its name defined. In the next episode, we will be learning about the color correction. Color correction is to manipulate the images and give them some bright look. This process is basically called post-production in entertainment. Then we would be discussing about the filters or effects. So, Till the next time, it's a good pie.